99% of the public have no idea that the service or technology that we offer exists. A big reason why for our social media posts and content and why we're doing this podcast, we want to try and let and inform as many people as possible that this is a solution. Welcome to the Royal Flush Podcast. My name is John Overy. I am the VP of Sales here at Royal Flush. In this internal episode, we sit down with Kyle behind the mic and go over some of the more common, frequently asked questions when it comes to epoxy pipelining, what it is to know about our service, and some of the things you can expect on a project if we end up doing business with you. So I think it's a great episode. Have a listen, enjoy it, and more importantly, if you have any specific questions, message us, email, follow us on Facebook, all the social media sites, ask us any of your questions, we can answer it. Have a listen, hope you enjoy it. In this episode, we're going to cover some of the more frequently asked questions when it comes to us at Royal Flush and any projects that we take on in a commercial, industrial, or residential environment. But before uh, I bring Kyle in behind the mics and behind the camera to ask us some of those more popular questions and answer them for you, I want to give you a quick 10,000-foot overview about what our epoxy pipelining really is and what it is that we actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so what we at Royal Flush do and specialize in is the rehabbing and permanent fix of underground sewer lines in commercial, in industrial, or residential properties. And so what I want you to do is, if you're a homeowner and you're listening, think of uh, the pipes in your house, right? So you've got a single story or a two story, three story house, and you've got fixtures. You've got your sink, your washing machine, your dishwasher, your toilet, your bathtub. All of those pipes are running in the house and connecting what we call to a vertical stack. That stack is taking the water, bringing it down usually to a basement and heading either into the basement floor or out through the foundation into a pipe that connects to a septic system or a town sewer. That is called your main sewer line. You as the homeowner are responsible for the upkeep and maintenance of that pipe. And so if that pipe was ever to break, crack, get destroyed, have root infiltration, maybe heavy scale and rust buildup, and God forbid ever lead to the backup or a backup of actual nasty raw sewage going into your property, you'd have to figure out how to fix it. So what we do is we really offer three main advantages. One is the lack of disruption to the property. Two is a true permanent fix. And three is the speed or time in which our service is done. And so the traditional way to fix these problems was, is what we call the dig and replace method. And so that is hiring an excavation contractor to come with a bulldozer and literally dig up everything. Potentially dig up your foundation, dig up your basement floor, dig up your yard, your driveway, your pavers, your beautiful grass, your flower garden, dig up the road and physically put in a new pipe. Now, a lot of projects we do have to dig access pits or holes, but again, we are not digging or trenching the entire property and making this huge disruption. So what we do is we take an, a felt sleeve, think of it as a long tube sock. We fill it with an epoxy resin, this really cool liquid, and then we go ahead and turn that tube sock inside out or inflate or what we call insert or shoot that tube sock down the pipe. It could be any dimension, any length, four inches, six inches, can be 5 feet, 10 feet, 20 feet, 100 feet. It doesn't really matter. From there, once that tube sock with that epoxy is in the pipe, we blow it up with an air compressor, right? So now it takes the shape and the size and goes in all the nooks and crannies and crevices. And one of the coolest parts of what we do, which makes us a little different in this industry, is we cure that epoxy with ultraviolet light. If anybody's been to the dentist recently and got a cavity and they put a little blue light on your cavity to cure it, or any ladies out there have been to the nail salon recently, they put on your nail polish and they say, hey, go sit under there, under the lights. It's going to dry the nail polish. It's the same exact technology. The ultraviolet light has an instant chemical reaction with that epoxy resin in the pipe and basically hardens that tube sock and creates a new pipe inside your old pipe without having to dig up and trench the entire yard. So it's really a huge value add. Again, if you want to uh, eliminate the disruption at your house or certainly in the commercial and industrial world, these places can't shut down for days, weeks on end. You can't dig up a whole entire parking lot. There's usually gas line and utilities and all these other speed bumps that come up that make our service and solution a lot more palatable to somebody who wants to minimize the disruption to their business. So that's kind of like a quick 10,000 foot view of epoxy pipelining and what it is and how it works. In a lot of uh, more episodes, we're going to go into heavy de detail about what we do and really dig into the technology. We're going to do a Pipelining 101 episode coming up soon. So anybody who's really interested in it can uh, do a full dive of probably 45 minutes to an hour 
on how it works and what we do. But anyway, there's usually five to ten, eight common questions that anybody asks us, whether we're talking to them on the street, whether we're down the road of doing a project together, or literally maybe we're showing up the day of. And so, Kyle, um, I want you to go ahead and shoot off to me some of these common questions we have. So if you're interested in our technology, maybe you're doing a project with us, or maybe just thinking about some things that we might get asked, I want to address them today and hopefully answer them for anybody listening. So go ahead, Kyle, you shoot. So the first one we have is kind of just like a general overview. What should a customer expect the day of a job? Yeah. So a, a traditional project for us is obviously scheduled out and communicated um, heavily, right? So we're going to be signing estimates. We're going to be uh, talking about payment schedule. We're going to be confirming and calling the day ahead to make sure that we're there. But basically, we show up at you know Mrs. And Smith's house, and here's what we say the day before. We suggest that everybody in the home do what we call their morning routines before we arrive. So whatever that entails for you, bathroom, shower, brush teeth, you know, do the dishes, whatever it is. But when we show up on site, no water can be in use. And so here's the importance reason for that. And of course, uh, it has happened many times before we show up, we get into work and people use flush the toilet or start using water. And so the importance of that is we are very 99% of the time, all the time, we're going to be cutting into and accessing your sewer line. So when you go ahead and flush the toilet, that water that wants to flow down a probably a very bad pipe, that's the reason why we're there, that's going to be temporarily cut. So what you could have happen is literally your shit be going into your basement. Or for us, selfishly, could be going onto one of our guys who might be in an access pit, a hole, or physically have their hand down their pipe with one of our pieces of equipment. And so we want to eliminate that from happening because we don't want to make any more mess that probably has already been created from this pipe that has not been performing. But really, we want our guys to be safe and sanitary. So what we say, any standard job, do your morning routine before we arrive. When we get on site, absolutely no water can be used. However, one of the benefits for us, if we're talking about a residential project, 99% of our jobs are done in one business day. So again, we talk about the lack of disruption or minimizing that for a customer and minimizing uh, the headache and the pain and again, the disruption for that day. When we leave and we wrap up, everything's going to be put back together. That pipe is going to be ready to go. And so literally the second we pull out of the driveway, your new epoxy lined pipe inside your old pipe is cured, dry, ready to use, and you can go about your evening as if we were never there. You can come home, cook dinner, use the sink, use the bathroom, take a shower or a tub, run the dishwasher, you're good to go. So the next question is, you kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, I know there are some companies in our industry that have trucks that say no dig, Mm -hmm. never need to dig, Um, but you did kind of touch on the access pits. Yeah. Do we need to dig, and if so, when? Yeah, that is a great question, and actually it's kind of a, a misconception or a misnomer in our industry. So what? Uh, another word for the technology that we do in epoxy pipelining is called trenchless technology. It's not called no-dig technology, even though a lot of people use that, and we use that term very, very loosely. And so probably in about 30 to 40% of the jobs, we need to dig what's called an access pit. That could be inside that could be outside for many, many different reasons, uh, probably too many to cover right now. But we basically need to have proper access to the pipe, really more importantly for the cleaning process than the actual lining process, but they go hand in hand. So when if we're doing business together, that means you have had a major issue. You've probably had some sort of sewage backup. You've probably had something really significantly flowing very low or little. And this has probably been a problem that you've been dealing with over time for many, many years. And now you're at the point where you're looking for a solution to solve the problem permanently. And that's where you've brought us in. So there's going to be some nasty stuff inside this pipe. If you have a cast iron pipe, there's probably heavy scale and debris and buildup. Think of it like a really nasty clogged artery. If you have clay pipes, these are going to almost always have roots infiltrating like this spider web of roots getting in there and really catching the toilet paper and the waste and debris and causing a backup. So like any construction project, we need to prep that line, right? Any good contractor is going to prep a service. If you're painting a house or a wall, you need to prep it first. We've got to prep that line and get all that nasty stuff out before we can go ahead and insert our liner. And so part of that process is we need to have clean, clear access to the pipe. In a lot of projects, that means having to dig an access pit again in the ground 
or in the basement to gain access to that pipe to cut it so we can take our really cool state-of-the-art tools and equipment, get it in the pipe, get it cleaned, get all that nasty stuff out, and then actually insert our epoxy liner. And so, again, what you have to think about is the amount of disruption. So certainly, maybe a 3 by 3 hole in your unfinished basement floor could be a pain point, but we're going to concrete it back, and at the end of the day, it's not that big a deal. Maybe you do have beautiful yard and beautiful grass. Would you rather have a 5x5 five five hole dug, or would you rather have a 100-foot trench dug in your yard? So it's not perfect. You know, what we're selling is not magic. Um, we do need to dig certain times, but again, it's trenchless. If the disruption compared to the other option, you know, you're talking 5% compared to 100%. So that's a great question we get a lot of times, a misnomer again. Trenchless technology, not necessarily no dig. We probably dig in 25 to 40% of our jobs. So um, I guess kind of bouncing off of the whole digging thing, why do most plumbers still want to dig? What's yeah, so... Differentiator, I guess. Our... Um, We'll kind of back that out. Our real barrier in our business and our growth model is simply just education. So what we always say is that 99% of the public have no idea that the service or technology that we offer exists. A big reason why, Kyle, you work here for our social media posting content and why we're doing this podcast, we want to try and let and inform as many people as possible that this is a solution. Um, but even from there, within any trades, we work with a lot of general contractors, a lot of builders, remodelers, and we work with a lot of other plumbers. Even within our own trade, 99% of people don't know that pipelining exists or certainly don't know anything about it to even recommend somebody, hey, you should have your pipeline. They, don't even, they can't speak you know, um, logically or intelligently about it. So um, also, it's a, you know, kind of a, a fad in our industry. As you know, in the construction industry, the trades are getting older and older and older. You know, not many young people are going into the plumbing industry. And not to generalize or really put this broad stroke, but there are a lot of really great high-tech plumbers out there who are on the cutting edge of all technology. But there's also a lot of old dogs. And Kyle, as you know, it's tough to teach an old dog new tricks. Mm -hmm. And so if a plumber, you know, Bob, your local plumber, who's a phenomenal guy and amazing at what he does, but if he's still soldering pipes... And, you know, swapping out that water heater, which is a great service and doing it right and making sure there's no leaks and he's dependable and trustably. But if he's still doing that the old-fashioned way, he's not going to be open to saying, hey, I think these guys can line your pipe, right? And so it's just educating them about what it is that we do. Now, not every single pipe or every single scenario is pipelining the perfect marriage or the fix for it. That would be a complete lie if I ever told you that. There are still, without a doubt, certain instances where dig-in replacing or digging a pot, uh, what we call a spot repair are an appropriate fix, without a doubt. But for us, those chances are getting less and less because there's so many different ways that we can maneuver to help fix a problem or a solution. And so if I'm going to kind of recap that quickly, most of the time for us, if somebody's going to offer a dig-in replace method, it's really simply because they're unaware of what we do, how it works in our technology. And Whenever we get the chance to get in front of somebody, whether it's, you know, kind of a recommend, they, hey, I know this guy, this plumber, this plumber, they said you did a job for him. Hey, call Susie. She's got a problem. I think you can help, right? That's kind of how the infancy of our relationship with plumbers works. Whenever they see it in person, old or young, they go, oh, I get it now. I'm going to recommend you guys for all this stuff because maybe I don't specialize in digging or I can't handle this or this doesn't make sense for me to do this. I'll just recommend you guys. That happens every single time. The second somebody sees how it works in person, sees the final result, and more importantly for plumbers, sees the type of equipment and tools that we pull up with, they go, oh, okay, I get what you guys are doing now. This is way different than digging a hole and patching it with some fern codes that can lead to future issues and all this other technical stuff that I don't need to cover right now. Those are the two main barriers of why somebody would dig a post to call us. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is what size pipe can you line? Yeah, that's a common question we get. Um, any pipe can be lined. Any dimension pipe with the technology can be lined. What we really specialize in is 15 or 18 inches and below, um, and nothing less than three inches. So again, you know, residential is, a, is the simplest analogy. 99% of any property home, the pipe under the ground leading out of the house is gonna be four inches in diameter or above, right? So a four inch circle or bigger. Um, 
when you get to some uh, commercial and industrial properties and when you get into the street, that's when you get the bigger size pipes. That's when you get 6, 8, 10, 12, 15 inches. Um, and again, in, in our sphere of technology, you know, there's pipes under the ground that are 6 feet tall, 6 feet wide. Um, so any size pipe can be lined. We do not have the technology to line what we call the big boy pipes. There's some large national pipelining contractors that really specialize in large diameter municipal work, cities and towns and stuff like that. And they're great at what they do. And they're very production based and they're banging out these big, big boy pipes in the ground, in the street. Um, but what we specialize in is what we call privatized work. You know, we're dealing with the homeowner the facility maintenance director, the property manager who's overseeing that property. And 99% of those times, those pipes are no bigger than 18 inches. And that's right in our wheelhouse. So the, uh, the big question that I'm sure is on everyone's mind about this type of stuff, uh, and I'm sure there's a bunch of different ways you can go with it, uh, but how much does it cost? Yeah, ooh, the cost, yeah. So um, – Pricing, I'll give you my little spiel, which you've heard me say many times, Kyle. Whenever we make a decision in life, and this is in my opinion, there's usually two factors that we uh, consider, time and money. Certainly when, if we're hiring somebody to do the work for us. But, yeah, I mean, you know, if you're out buying a T-shirt, you might just go online because it's super easy and it's uh, a good price, so you buy it, right? Super yep. easy. But, you know, if you're going to get a new roof, you're going to probably get some quotes from some different people. And, you know, if the price is the same and one guy can't get to it for three months and some guy can do it tomorrow, that might be a deciding factor of how you make your decision, right? So time and money are two factors that we take in consideration a lot. Um, by no means can anybody, including us, ever give you a true price over the phone without seeing the pipe. You know, for us, the steps are getting a camera inspection. That is the end-all, be-all. That's the arthroscopic scope inside the pipe. That's what allows us to gather all the information, assess the condition, where the pipe leaves, if we need that access pit or not, the total length. And that allows me to put into our beautiful, fancy formula and come up with a custom estimate for you and your job. However, there are some broad strokes that we can put in there that I would give anybody. So, Kyle, if you call me up over the phone, and I asked you five or six questions, and I think what you explained to me was a good candidate. Here's exactly what I would tell you. A traditional residential job can be anywhere between five and $20,000. Now, that's a big range, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we're talking, you know, a fancy ride on lawnmower, or we're talking like a Kia, right? Is a, a, you know, a car could be twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000. Yeah. Um, we're doing a large-scale residential job right now that's $45,000. So it can be a really, really wide range. But here's the factors that go into it. And I think if somebody's listening, how you can understand why we can't give a price in some of the price ranges. Number one is that access pit. That's a wild card on any job. You have to imagine if I got to dig a little pit in your basement floor, that might be $1,000, $1,200, $1,500. If you have a house trap in the yard, if you've got a, a section of pipe that's collapsed and broken in your yard and it's 10 feet deep and I have to use my excavator, that could be five or ten thousand dollars to leave that access pit. So that's a really big wild card that can really fluctuate a job right off the bat. So mm -hmm. if you need an access pit, and again, twenty-five to forty percent of our jobs, that's something that's a variable that we'll never know until we physically get there. So that's kind of number one. Number two is the overall current condition of your pipe. Again, we don't know that until we go there and see it. So if you use a scale of one to ten, one being a brand new pipe and it's the most perfect, beautiful pipe you've ever seen in your life. And the 10 being the worst pipe you could ever imagine. There's rocks and debris and roots. And it's, you know, filled with debris. And there's a little baby pinhole the water is, is flowing through. The time, energy, manpower, and our tools and equipment that we're going to have to use to clean and prep that pipe, we went over that process of how important it was, are going to be significantly higher on a pipe that's a 7 or 8 on the scale opposed to a pipe that's a 1 or a 2. So we won't be able to assess the condition of the pipe. Thus, I don't know how much it's going to quote unquote, cost the customer to prep it until we see it, right? So again, that's a huge variable that by no means can I ever give to somebody over the phone. And then the second and third factors are the size of the pipe, whether it's four inches or six inches. You got to think a, a six inch pipe, we're using significantly more material and resin and liner, which are very, very expensive. And the length, right? It's a rolling scale. If you have 10 feet of pipe, it's going to be a higher dollar amount per foot. If you have 100 feet of pipe, it's going to be a lower dollar amount per foot, but you got to imagine 
to line a pipe that's 100 feet is going to be significantly more expensive than if it's 20 feet. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of like the four pillars of an estimate when we send our crew out and we camera a pipe that we're gathering that information that could come up. So literally, Kyle, you could have your house, uh, a 1,200 square foot ranch, three bed, one bath Mm -hmm. on a nice little lot in your neighbor's house, the exact same house, you know. 1,200 square foot ranch, three bed, same lot, same everything, built the same year. I could give you a price of 8,000. I could give them a price of 20,000. That could both equally be completely appropriate because no two pipes are ever the same. And so the condition of Bobby's your neighbor, uh, you know, he could have a root in every single joint and his cast iron could be crazy. And, you know, his pipe at the street takes a 45 degree angle and ends up being 100 feet where... Maybe you've done some maintenance over the years. You have it jetted and cleaned. You don't use any baby wipes. They use all baby wipes. You know, your pipe goes right to the street, so it's actually 60 feet, not 100. And your pipe goes out through the foundation wall where his pipe goes through through the basement floor. You don't need an access pit, and he does. So literally two houses the exact same could be $10,000 apart. Mm. And so what we always ask, and and literally that's exactly what I say to every customer. So I say, if that's in the ballpark of something that you're thinking it would cost or you could potentially be willing to explore for a permanent solution, we want to come out and do a camera inspection. If it's not, I totally get it. You know, we talk to people like, oh, I I thought this would cost like $1,000. What we want to avoid, twofold, we want to avoid wasting the homeowner's time. More importantly, selfishly, I don't want to waste my time. And again, whatever you perceive your value is totally cool with us. Our service isn't for everyone. We, by no means do we ever say it's inexpensive. We obviously know and see the value in it, but that doesn't mean it's for everybody. And so we don't want to, you know, get to step 10. Well, we've looked at the job and we've explained to you the value and we've written an estimate and you're like, wow, this sounds perfect. And I give you a quote for $12,000 and you're like, I thought it was going to be like three. That was a real waste of everybody's time, including the homeowner, because now he, he needs a solution. Mm. You know, the guy's going through the step that's, you know, maybe even only taking a day, but he's looking for a solution to a problem. Now, ultimately, I just completely wasted his time because we're not even in the same ballpark as far as what he wants for a solution. Now, he could come back to me three months later and say, I've explored every solution and actually yours ends up being the best. You know, I've got some financing or whatever, and I'm going to end up doing it. But to be, we try to be as transparent as possible about pricing because we know uh, it's a significant investment. It's a large out-of-pocket sum. Again, we are not like a traditional contractor where it's 500 bucks or I'll have a handyman come over to fix something that's 1000 or even, you know, your traditional plumber. Swap out a water heater, it might be 1000 to $2,000 to fix a leaky sink, two, three, four, five hundred 500 bucks, right? Still chunks of money, but very short-term, easy. Guy comes over, you fix, okay, here's the check, here's the cash, no big deal. That is not our service, by no means. Mm. And what I always say is that we take advantage of, or we take for granted the condition of that underground pipe because we never see it or touch it, right? You just flush the toilet and stuff goes down. But it's as important, if not more, than all the other big fixes we look around the house, right? If you stood outside and you looked at your roof and you're like, holy shit, there's shingles missing, there's a hole, I have a leak. You would know, depending on the size of your house, a roof could be five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. It's kind of a common thing. Maybe somebody who's handy might have an idea of what something like that might cost. Or if a roofer came over and gave you that price, you're probably not going to be shocked. You might not want to pay it. You might find somebody cheaper, but you might not be shocked. The same thing is, you know, well, all my windows are leaking and six of them are broken. I'm going to get a company come over to replace 18 of my windows. That's not going to be $2,500. It could be 17 grand, right? Mm-hmm. I need to upgrade my whole entire electric panel. Again, that's not going to be $1,000. So our underground pipelining solution mm-hmm. is in the same realm of those big picture high-end important fixes for your property and again it's just trying to communicate and make sure that people convey the value and that they understand and what it is that we're offering and again you know a roof could cost 10 15 grand same thing with your underground pipe that's the same type of realm we're in Hmm. so the next question is should i be worried about chemicals in my water in your water chemicals well um that's always a, a good mixed conception because What we're fixing and what we're treating is all the stuff coming out of your house, right? And so people sometimes say, oh, you know, I got some pipes leaking in my house from my radiator or, uh, you know, the water line coming from my house. So we're only fixing what we call gray water. 
Um, so you've got to imagine, uh, we'll take any city, you know, our office is in here in East Providence. You've got a pipe under the ground that's connected in the street that brings the water to your house. That's your water line. It's usually about an inch and a half or two inches. When you, so when you turn on the sink, you turn on your outside faucet for your hose, right? The water comes out. That's your water line. That's water coming into your house. We don't fix or line those pipes. That's called what we call potable drinking water. Um, if it was my house, I would use, I'd feel comfortable enough to put a liner in that type of pipe. But our products that we install are not tested for third-party ASTM, EPA, all that stuff. It's not tested for potable drinking water. So we're not doing anything coming into the house. We're only doing all the stuff coming out, which is what we call gray water, a water that's being used. So again, you run the sink, that goes down your pipes, that's gray water. You take a shower, that water is dirty from your body, that's gray water. You run the dishwasher, that's gray water. Of course, from the toilet, that might be more like brown water. Um, but yeah, all the water that's being used and now dirty that's not going to be used anymore that is heading out of the property, that is gray water. That is the pipe that we are fixing and solving. The uh, next one, I know you mentioned root infiltration earlier. Mm -hmm. Will epoxy pipelining stop root infiltration? It definitely will, 100%. So um, there's a couple different types of pipes, but roots can infiltrate a clay pipe pretty aggressively. So you got to think it's uh, 1940. Okay, and uh, you got Uncle Bob's house, home building, and maybe sewer installation company, right? Mm -hmm. Good old boys in 1940. Everything's great. We're building houses. America is wonderful. Um, and they're installing clay pipe under the ground. Think of it just as I use the analogy of like 11th grade art class. You got clay. You're molding it. You're putting it in the kiln, and you're making, I don't know, a cup for your mom mm -hmm. or like a soup dish or something, right? Uh, it's the same material. It's clay. And these came in three or five foot sections that they would put under the ground, right? So they'd stack them up together and they put it out to the connection in the street and that's your clay pipe. But um, the way they were connected, right? These joints, there was no like mechanical fasteners. They just kind of like pushed them together. Mm -hmm. And so over, you know, it's 1940, it's 20, uh, what's that, 80 years, 80 years ago. Um, you got to think the ground's settling and moving and things are deteriorating. So these joints are becoming really loose and flimsy and roots will are very intrusive will find their way in the ground find that gap or crack in that clay pipe and just infiltrate right into the pipe um and so what our liner is as i explained to you before is this really cool tube sock and we can make it any size or dimension or length but the liner is going to be one continuous seamless piece this is a huge value add and attribute of what we're doing and so uh, again we'll talk about in your basement where that pipe comes down and we'll say it goes out of your foundation wall all the way to the street. Let's say that's 50 feet. We're going to insert our liner from inside the house at the foundation all the way to the connection in the street. So if we had, if that was made of clay pipe and it's 50 feet, and I can't do this math, and there are five foot sections, that's 10 joints or cracks that roots could be infiltrating, 10 points. If we have a liner and it's one continuous piece from the house to the street, there are now no points of infiltration. It's truly one continuous seamless, impenetrable piece of pipe. Think of it that way. So your roots can still grow in your old clay pipe, but now they're going to be stopped by an epoxy liner that's inside that. They cannot penetrate through that. The liner is all these crazy third-party tensile strength uh, testing, all this crazy stuff. The roots under no circumstances could ever physically penetrate that liner, and thus you truly solve that problem permanently and you'll have no issue with roots ever again. Next question is, if I have multiple lines connecting to one line, mm -hmm. how will it flow through with the liner in the way? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question that we get all the time. And this is a really cool piece of equipment. So let me, if you're listening and certainly watching, I'll use my hands here, but let me explain it to you. So we've got a pipe under the ground. This is your main pipe here. And uh, this is carrying all that nasty gray water out of the house. But maybe you added a bathroom or an addition or something on the side and you have another pipe that is connecting to it with a, a fitting or a connection or a Y. These are kind of plumbing terms. And these two pipes can join into one. When we insert our liner, as I told you, it's one continuous seamless piece. It's going to temporarily cover up that connection. Think of it as a four-way stop, Kyle, or actually a two-way stop, right? You've got your a, a three-way stop actually is more, more appropriate. So think of a stop sign. You've got uh, your straight road and you come to a stop and there's another road connecting into it, right? We're going to be lining where you're driving. This is a straight road. We're going to temporarily be covering up that stop sign. So if you flush that toilet, it's going to hit the liner and it's going to be stopped. So what we do is we have to cut out what we call reinstate that lateral connection. 
So this is what this is. If anybody out there owns a Dremel tool, it's a lot of different brand names, that, um, but yeah, it's called a Dremel tool. Uh, we have a really, really fancy robotic version of that. So this is an articulating arm that we go down the pipe that can swivel 360 degrees. It's got a camera on it and it has basically a really fancy high uh, RPM spinning bit on it. And what we do is we're going to send that down the pipe and we've marked it out. And so, you know, we're down 25 feet and there's a lateral connection from this other bathroom that is intersecting and coming into this main line. We need to go ahead and reinstate or cut a hole or cut a hole in our liner or reopen the flow so that water and that gray water can now flow into the main pipe and go out to the city connection. And so we send the arm down, we look at the camera and we go ahead and cut out or buzz out a hole in that lateral connection, reopening the flow, what we call reinstating the flow, thus allowing that pipe to flow properly into the line that we just uh, fixed with our epoxy lining. And so it's a really cool tool. Uh, it's expensive, it's state of the art. It's uh, little joysticks and robotics. But yes, any, um, any pipe, uh, it's a lot more common in the commercial and industrial world. you got to think maybe uh, a pipe in an office building that's running right down the middle of a hallway. Maybe it's picking up bathrooms and sinks, and there's six different connections. That's where that comes into uh, a lot more play. Certainly at a lot of residential houses, we'll do what we call maybe one or maximize uh, maximum of two reinstatements. Maybe they got some downspouts under the ground connecting to that pipe. But usually that is done in our commercial industrial work. Again, where there's many different connections, you got to think maybe there's a gang of bathrooms. You know, you've got six women's bathrooms on one side, six men's. Those toilets connect to three or four pipes, and they're all connecting to one big pipe on a highway underneath the floor. When we line that highway under the floor, we got to cut open all those holes, make sure all those toilets can flow. So, yeah, just a cool piece of equipment that cuts it open and solves the problem. All right, and then the final question. I know you've mentioned in past videos this is probably your favorite thing that we offer, uh, and I don't think we'd ask it if the answer wasn't yes, mm -hmm. but uh, do you have a warranty? And if so, kind of touch on that a little bit. Yeah, we definitely have a warranty. Um, so the state of, well, we're in Rhode Island, but the state of Rhode Island and Massachusetts for any contracting, the contracting board basically states it's a one-year warranty, right? That's any contract, anywhere, if you have your house painted, if you do anything, it's basically whether they actually have it in writing or not, it's a one-year contractor warranty. But we at Royal Flush, we have a two-phase warranty. We have a 10-year written warranty. Um, and if I'm going to be honest and transparent, we came up with that number arbitrarily. <laughs> but we felt uh, with our confidence and our knowledge of the performance of this, we felt that we wanted to offer a significant peace of mind. You know, I could have put 50 years on it, but, you know, I think honestly that's that's not realistic for somebody. So we feel the 10-year warranty is an appropriate period of time for peace of mind and knowledge that we're standing behind what we're doing. For us, more importantly, our warranty is backed by a 50-year life expectancy from our manufacturer. So that's kind of a little bit of, a, of a, a pick point and something different, but let me explain what that is, what that means, and why it's listed this way. So again, we at Royal Flush have a 10-year written warranty. It's a form that we give you at the end of the job that I sign and date says the job's been paid, gives the details and the estimate. It's written out, it's black and white. It's very, very simple, 10 years. The company that we buy our materials from is called MaxLiner. They're a manufacturer and distributor of the liquid resins and the felt tubes and all kinds of cool equipment that we buy. Um, they have these liners and these resins tested vigorously by third-party companies, ASTM, which I forget what it stands for now, but that's a very industry prominent in the construction world, very prominent in the construction world industry for testing something, right? When you see, when you buy a tube of caulk and it says 50 years, like how do they come up with this number? Basically what they do is they take the product, any product, in our case, it's a, a pipeline or in a resin, and they expose it to what 50 years would be like. So they have labs and weather testing, and basically they've run 50 years of water through this pipe. And they say that this pipe will last 50 years, no question asked. And so that's where the 50-year life expectancy comes from. It's not a 50-year warranty. It's a 50-year performance life expectancy. And we decided to back that with our own 10-year warranty from us at Royal Flush. So we feel, I don't know any other industry or trade or service or contractor that is offering you a 10-year warranty with a product that's backed 
by a 50 year life expectancy. So, and so what we always like to kind of say, and what we joke is that, you know, the people we're dealing with are certainly homeowners, but you know, facility directors and thing, you know, people that are in their thirties that basically you're never going to have to worry about this pipe again for the rest of your life. 50, I joke 50 years from now, there'll be some version of epoxy pipelining that you sprinkle a fairy dust on the pipe and the water and the poop magically disappears and you don't even have to worry about it. And so we like to say we are offering you a true permanent solution for pretty much your entire lifetime that you're never going to have to worry about that pipe under the ground, leaking, cracking, getting backed up due to uh, anything besides something that may be nefarious and it's going to solve your problem permanently. So we're really proud of that 10 year warranty from us backed by a 50 year life expectancy or design life from a manufacturer. We think it's pretty comprehensive and uh, we're proud of that warranty. So, any more questions, Kyle? That is all we have for today. Okay. So if you have any more specific questions, anybody listening, you can email us on our website. You can DM us on social media. You can email me directly. My email is john at royalflushpipelining.com. I would love to answer any questions you might have about your pipe, a question you might have about our technology, or maybe more importantly, if you have an issue that maybe you're looking to solve permanently, Give us a call. We can set up a camera inspection. We'd love to take a look at it and solve your problem forever. And so that's going to wrap up this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope uh, that answered some of your questions about our technology. Definitely have a listen for either our next episode or our future episode where we're going to go into what we call Pipelining 101 and really delve into the nitty-gritty about what we do, how it works, even more benefits, maybe even some more questions that some people might have, and hopefully educate you on what we do, and maybe one day we can actually work each other and help you out. So thanks for listening. Greatly appreciate it.